Okay, so following on from last time, uh, where I implemented AFL fuzzing uh, binary creation in CMake scripting and infrastructure and stuff, to allow me to create fuzz tests, I want to actually use them and implement implement and use them to help me cover far more code than I can otherwise could, especially for things that take textual or any kind of input realistically. Starting with inside graphics uh, VK, the YAML library, there is this. Now what's happening here, you know, rolling back a little while, I have a number of structs, uh, Vulkan structs that I just have like that I auto generate code that reads and writes these things to YAML minus a couple things like this one, ones that are hashed out or uh, commented out using this shell script. And they generate this, which is a large file of you know, 2,200 lines of templated code. But because I'm lazy, I only implemented manually created tests for two of those structs, the pipeline depth stencil state created info and stencil off state. So when I, let's say, do code coverage, like I've actually run the, the code coverage for graphics VK YAML, I have no coverage of anything. Uh, Yeah, that's the right. Uh, am I doing something wrong here? Am I... Oh, when I copy pasted this, I must have put it in the wrong library. Graphics VK YAML. Okay, uh, let's do that again, shall we? Okay, there we go. Way better, way better. I mean... It still looks absolutely terrible. The numbers I'm doing testing is absolutely garbage, especially on the struct parsing file, right? 15% function coverage, line coverage, 11% region, and 10% branches. That's terrible. Uh, and of course, like the only ones that are actually partially run are, the, yeah. And I'm not even doing a very good coverage of the whole thing. terrible absolutely terrible so the idea the plan is I'm going to massively increase code coverage by auto generating test sets that will hopefully cover far more than 15% of the file that's generated and allow me to more easily add tests add more structs more 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 everything and in order to do that I was going to use fuzz fuzzing where I was going to have let's say I was going to like set a template of you know you know a basic set of you know values and then just have it iterate massively over those and find edge cases and stuff and maybe find some crashes or find some edge cases that I'm not dealing with even in my raw code because again like these are manually um, generated so they're probably they're only this is the best set of cases that I have. I, they, it's not exhaustive, I'm sure. So, what am I going to do first? I obviously, I want to do several things. First of all, I want to change up how I generate these functions, right? The functions that go into the, the struct parsing CPP, this needs to be changed up. I need to be able to auto-generate these. I need to be able to auto-generate, let's say, the, the basic uh, test data, such as this. Then put them in the files. And then I also need to be able to fuzz them so I can find generate a whole bunch of extra out, or inputs to test. And then feed those into like some sort of, in, into the uh, test that I already, into this test application to generate much better code coverage, as well as to actually test what I generate properly in all cases, all of, all the branches, all the things. So to begin with, 
one of the items. First of all, like this is a, this is this is this was basic. This served its purpose when I generated it a year ago, just eleven months ago. Fine, great, fantastic. Is it good enough for now? No, not anymore. Not anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change up a number of things. First of all, I have much better. Uh, I have a much better. Uh, ability to use i'm much better at using and figuring out in the vulcan mini libs that i also do i have tools that generate something like this this generated cache of like a whole bunch of information on can i just format this please yeah you know uh different enum types the values and when they're first and last found and their values and blah 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 blah. a whole bunch of extended information that i grabbed from the vulcan documentation xml itself i want to use this in information instead to generate all of this other uh downstream products so to begin with what's going to be happening is okay i need some kind of first of all I need, okay, I've got tools. What I'm going to do is like, I don't know. Yeah. New process. Let's shell script, let's say, for now. SH, and it's going to run, I don't, I don't know. Uh, if I'm sitting in, sorry, libs. Graphics, BK, Libs, YAML, tools? Yeah, if I'm sitting in here, I need to go back, what, one, two, three, four, and then I can go to external. Nope. External. Vulcan mini libs, Vulcan mini libs, tools, and generates. What's in here? Parse VK doc. Something like this. So much like in there, I'm I'm always going to have this available. It's it's a sub module for now. So I'm going to kind of copy some bits of this. So I'm going to have my own copy of stuff. Uh, yep. I'm going to have this. Great. Make a copy locally. Fetch. I also want to Okay. Mod plus X new process. I want to be able to have a local copy of the XML of generated XML that I can use. And I want to make sure it's of the latest tag. I don't need to do all them all like this. I just need the latest tag. So I just need this fetch p, um, and then I want to get checkout or tag equals this, and it'll be like one, the first one. Tag, and then I want to get Latest tag of 204, that's great. Got that, great. Keep that nice and quiet. Great. Um, and then we'll parse the this with we're just going to grab, so it's from here, input, oops, it's not quite here, it's Vulcan docs, that, and it'll be output into a file that I'll just like, yeah, dot gen cache, Alexa, and they'll do that, error parsing options, great.
Oh, W. Okay, then we have the gen cache. We have our own version. First and last is always 204 because that's what we're looking at. That's fine. We'll just format this for quick use in here. Okay. So, what part do I want to focus on first? I mean, I already have... Okay, I already have struct parsing. This is kind of already here. I can use this as a jumping off point to do other interesting things first. And the first one of those I will do will be generating, let's say, the input data, the, the corpus information. So let's do, and I'll do it in Python. Um, I'm going, okay, yeah, I need to replace this VK struts. I need to, I'm going to have like, um, file like this it's going to be like like this let's say I have this it'll be YAML types we'll have that with nothing let's grab let's say this we'll just specify the types and then we'll have like you know exclude and we'll have a list of let's say p immutable samplers we'll do it like that Let's get one with a lot more. This will be perfect, maybe. Or is that more perfect? Which one? This has S type and P next and stuff. Okay. So this will require less maintenance, I guess. Moving forward. Rather than me having to copy and paste the struct and then hash to and comment out certain lines and then having to copy paste find whatever this S type is, I can just that information's all available in this if I recall correctly like um, find wherever this is uh, when I have a map I have the struct type the member the s type I have you know that and I have the value I can just grab all that in one go I don't have to a lot less manual whatever so I have what type was it vertex input state this one and I'm trying to ignore this I'm trying to ignore this Trying to ignore this. I'm trying to ignore this. Uh, do I have a type? Oh, I also need a type that has this because it has multiple bindings. I need this type as well. That exclude because of this. No, one of these have a pointer type. Oh, this one does. Okay, no, I'll just use this as a multi-pointer type. Is there one with a single pointer type, like a substruct? Is this a substruct? No. No. What is that? Is that a... S no, I don't think so. Print factor. I'm forgetting which type has a subtype. That I'm interested in. Ah, oh, I'll get back to it later. I'm sure I'll find it sooner or later. Um, set layout is ignoring binding count. Okay. So I'm generating a corpus. Voice Python 3. Uh, I need to import. Now, if I look back at this, cleanup header. This may be. Okay, we'll use this as a base. So I got options. I got the element tree. I'm not sure what I do with sys yet. Do I use sys for what? Exit? Yeah, okay, I do need that one then. Okay. And I need, uh, let me just double check what we have for YAML. Because I need YAML to import the struct. So Python 3 YAML. P 
high YAML. Okay, do I have that? Let me check. Pi YAML. No, I do not. Python dash PAML. Okay, now I do. Okay, what do I need first? Well, I'm gonna need a main. I need to call that main. So about here. And I have this stuff. And I have to, okay. Okay, we'll change this up to be like XML file and YAML file. Change it up to be X and Y. Try to read in the YAML file, which is probably like open. Uh, under read as file. With the exception of basically this could not reopen YAML file. Oh, and for corpus, it's like a directory. Okay. Um, I think. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to like split up each. It'd be best if I split up like uh, the corpus for each uh, struct into its own separate directory. So I test like isol them in isolation. I don't want to test them all together all of the time. I just want to like do you run a fuzz test and generate a whole bunch of uh, inputs just for this then just for this then just for this so i'll have to do like you know outdoor slash let's say this basically and times all the types so to do that i need um outdoor uh, oh. oh sorry this is supposed to be why I, what do I have this? This is Python. We're always going to specify it because there's going to be a whole bunch of subdirectories for each of the types um hmm. we want to put a, a slash onto the end okay so when I go through different structs Struct and struct. Wait, how do I specify struct? Struct equals data root find all that. Okay. I 
Okay, then I could just do this, right? For struct in data root dot find all. I'm going through all, I'm going through them all. Then I can just get what? How do I get struct name? Dot get. Dot tag? Dot tag in here? Yes, there we go. Okay. And then I want to go through if. I want to make sure I'm only dealing with the structs I care about. So if struct not. Sorry. Not struct name in YAML data. Continue. Otherwise, I'm going to then print out, hey, the struct name. Here we're going to do generate a Python. We're going to dash y equals yaml. Dash o is there. It's not uh, executable yet, is it? Parse options, cannot parse options. Uh, X, Y, that, right? One, two, three, four. Those are the four I have, correct? One, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> On the way. directory, which means I need OS. I need to make directories. This will make all directories, parent directories, down to the subdirectory I care about, which means um, hold on. I guess you do it here. So this slash for the, the struct name slash I don't even need this then. Outer and struct name. And then I have to if exist okay equals Great. So if the directory already exists, that's not a problem. Otherwise, it'll error out. I mean, if I, I recall that from way back when. So I need to open files that I'm going to be putting this data into. Now, I want to do two. I need to do two because I need to be able to test if it's at the root. So if it's just like the files just like this or if it's a subnode like like this one, like this whole piece together. So I'll test between like this and this. So I need two files that I'll just kind of pass through and just keep doing things. So out 
root, I'm going to call it. No, I should make that a that and then that plus writing. And then we've got the same thing going on for the sub. Out, out sub. Yeah, out sub. And I'll just have it like be standard. So it's just the out sub. It's always going to be the same node name, I should say. Sub node, like that. Okay, then I need to actually get into writing this. Beginning with, actually, let me grab a quick drink because this is going to be a long day, I think. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to be going through each of the members, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Member in member in here. Oh, I need to find which members I'm excluding as well. That, yeah. Oh, let me um, see exactly how this YAML data is written. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, so assuming that basically, based on how Python likes to do this, <clears throat> excluded members will normally be equal to empty, but if if YAML data. If we have data and exclude in YAML data struct name, then There we go. That will give me flexibility in the future to also add other things other than excluded. Actually, that's a yeah. It's yeah. That's why I'm doing it this way. Totally. Okay. Uh, grab some information. Member. Tag. We're gonna have the type. I need the type and. I need the type suffix stuff, like the const star stuff, if I recall correctly. If I can open this up and go to this one. Hmm. Yeah, type suffix. Okay, so equals member dot find of type and finding the type child you want to get the text off of that and then I have number suffix okay 
hit suffix if it exists. If this, then continue. We don't want to continue. We don't need. To, we don't want to do this. If member name is pnext, we don't care about this one. Or member type is, or sorry, member name s type. We also skip that. We don't bother with importing and exporting that. We know what it is. It's always the same. So continue off of those. Okay. Now, uh, members. How am I writing this out? Okay, let's start with a basic one. If, let's say, if it's a uint type, then we say, hey, you know, it's, um, since I'm writing this out twice, I need to do this. This one, next line, great. Dot format with the member name, name. And then we want uh, root dot write text dot root dot write. We want to add an indentation of two, and then the text. Okay. See how this excluded. Okay. In the outdoor, we have. Is there anything in here? We have subnode offset size. I'm sorry, what? Oh, out sub. That's how that's supposed to go. Okay. That looks better. Okay, so that's one sub. Okay, there we go. Uh, one sub becomes that. One becomes that. Okay. Great. Nothing in there. No, okay. Okay. So far, so good. Let's... Okay, what's the next type? What's the next most... Comp okay, the next most complicated type would be dealing with structs like if it's a substruct of some sort if it's a member if it's uh what is it the example i have here bindings p bindings this is a substruct of its own so i need to actually be able to deal with that which means i may need to go recursively down deeper 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 a couple times i can't do it all here so i'm going to need a function to do this like print struct going to take in it takes in something okay first of all I need the XML root or do I pass in the struct um, I need to pass in the XML root don't I because I'm going to have to there's nothing else in here that actually gives me that I can re figure out the struct from the struct name that I pass in. So that demo data struct name. Uh, we need the indentation to be a string of spaces that'll de determine how like how deep how many layers deep we go in. So like sub node will always start too deep and root won't something 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 like that. And two files. That should be enough to get us started. So, 
I need what? I need a, it just starts from here. Uh, read every indent the, this stuff correctly. Oh. Okay, uh, it's not this, it's struts that members, that's what I'm going to find out for that. Okay, that gives me the members I'm requiring anyways. Okay. So let's say I need some struct data. Do I need, okay, do I need the current struct data? I may as well, no, I may as well just say it specifically. It's a substruct data. Equals. Member type. So if, okay, then this is elif. Is two types. First of all, if it's a sub, if it's a direct substru uh, substruct, or if it's a pointer to like an array of them. Hmm. So, okay, let's substruct data. If if this just if this, then it's a substruct. Fine, whatever. I need to. I need the name. I need the member name, but I don't want to add like. Wait, no. If it's this, yeah, that'll be fine. So I can use I can use the member name as it is. So I can just say like text equals. I need the opening area. So uh, oh crap! But that's right. The indentation. I need the indentation and then that. So the indentation, number name, colon, new line. Okay, then I just kind of do these again here. And then I need to do the recursive struct thing. So, XML root, XML data, number type that we're dealing with, the indentation plus, uh, another, whoop, plus two spaces. Out root out sub okay. Is there um, stencil up state? Is this a substruct? Yes, this is okay. Perfect. I need this type. I need it. Give it to me. Is there anything I'm excluding from here? No. Okay. So this will be an example of that. So it was pipeline depth stencil created in front. Did I not? You. Nothing and nothing. Okay. Not what I was hoping for.
Really? Okay, let's just uh, print out. Okay, now I'm already printing generating four stuff, so I just want to print for member. I'm not even calling this at all, apparently. That's, yeah, okay. That, that, struct name. Indentation of nothing. That explains a fair bit. Okay. XML root. Data root. Okay, we're close. If YAML data and exclude in YAML data. Oh, I don't have a stencil op state. Whoops. Okay, whatever. I'll just I'll just make it easier and just have it in here. I'll figure out something else later if I need to. Okay, that great. Now we're here, front and back. They go in recursively, nice. And the same thing on the sub side, right? Yes. Okay. Closer. We're getting better. The other case for substruct data was if substruct data. And member type suffix, and there's a star in there. In there. That means there could be multiple, which means we need to do a list, much like this, as opposed to just indenting a single layer. There may be multiple of them, which means, first of all, I don't want to use the usual name that's used in Vulkan because that's like typically P something. So I just want to like just do bindings, not P bindings every time for these things. So I need to format that name a little bit. Dot lowercase, you want to. Lowercase p bindings p like is there p there's multiple p isn't there p yeah I don't really want to I want the start on hmm not quite okay I want member name uh, I want to chop off the first character okay then formatted name zero equals uh, Python or case single character from string Python lowercase first character in a string yeah it's as I thought, okay. Like that. It's supposed to be like that. Indentation, name, that, blah, blah, dot format. And 
Okay. We write out the two. Then I need for each of these things, which I'm only doing, am I just doing multiple? No, I'm doing just like one each time, right? For now. That's what I'm doing. Oh, no, but I should test multiple. Okay, I'll just, just get one out the door right now. So what, we have a new text, which is indentation plus space space that. Right, we spit that out. Great. Moniker. I don't know. Delimiter. data then, we'll, then we want to do data so this would be now we just do the exact same thing as this String object does not support item design. Um, plus the rest of the string. Okay. So which type was it? It was descriptor set layout create info. This. With by, uh, no, we're not going deeper than one. We need to go deeper by twice. Bindings, the binding description. Okay. Uh, I need to do enums, enum types, which is like descriptor type like this. Or flag types. Hmm. Which way do I do this? Okay, let's just start focus on the on the enum type first. I think. Um, so back to this. I have it in this. It's pretty high, high up, right? Root enums that. Okay. It's just enums. Remember type. Yeah, it'll be just like this. If we have enum data. If If we have something in here, maybe it's because maybe it's empty. Indentation type colon this, the value.
Okay, let me find a formatter for Python. Hold on a sec. Okay, that should be enough, right? Format. Bam. Okay. <clears throat> so, where was I? Yeah, enum text data if the this. Otherwise, text is somewhat similar minus one because we're just saying there. It, it's probably an empty flag of some sort, so there's just a zero. That can probably be done like that, right? Yeah. And then I just want to out print out these. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, sure. Probably some bunch of stuff going on here. Nice. So descriptor set layout create that still leaves the flags, right? I'm still missing a number of things out of here. So this was I'm missing flags. Because why? Uh huh. That's too hard. Oh, because it's flag bits. Okay. So if sorry if <clears throat> then elif elif do we have another elif down here for flag case? Okay, now we have the flag type name. We need to replace wherever flags is with flag bits. zero exists otherwise we've got the zero case again like up here and then that's it and then we have we need an else case like else uh, we're going to, have to print something like oh couldn't do couldn't Couldn't handle case where it's like um, struct name, da -da, type. Type that. And we just say type. in struct member name okay back to this um, text equals this with we have a type of that 
which is I did a zero tag to begin with anyways we can get rid of this printing good on handle type VK pool 32 in this okay so that's good I don't know if um oh shit I didn't mean oh I didn't mean to do this Get out of here. I don't know how I hit that five, but I did. So if that type, otherwise if UK bool thirty two. So indentation, member name, true or false? I, I guess. Or one zero or one zero. Um, oh, I really want to handle more than just a single case because right now, uh, whatever. Uh, min depth bounds float. Oh my god. Okay, float. Okay, that's all uh, cases handled for now. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So this one, we have this, the flags and the bindings. Bind. Yeah. Flat, skip, skip, flags, bindings, which then go into binding type count one. Yes, minus P mutable, that's good. UK pipeline, depth stencil state. Flags, enable, enable. Compare op, bool, bool. Op state, op state. Float, float. Okay. And it's the same thing, just one line down and over by two spaces. Good. It's coming together nicely. Great. Is there anything else I really want to do for spitting out? Okay, you know what? For the moment, this is enough for me to carry on and do other things. It's not perfect. I like. I really want to implement, you know, both doing both, you know, true and false for VK bool, or to handle more than just the first member in a flag type, or indeed the other enum types. But this works for now. So the next step of this would be generating the application that does the fuzzing. So let me just uh, be confused for a second while I decide to open up a new file. Fuzz source dot python so the fuzz source is going to begin with a much this stuff I'm not creating a new file that not that I'll just instead I'm going to just spit this out to the standard output I need this stuff down to about here and I need this down here I do not need output okay Just 
get rid of that. So what's going to happen is we're going to have like a fuzz. Something like this, uh, target link libraries, fuzz private. The library will fuzz in against. We need to if fl okay. And inside of this will be What is okay? First of all, we need to include the file we're testing. So graphics ek no no I don't even need this right because this is uh. This is just YAML stuff. I don't actually need that. I just need uh, what? What is this? Just this just requires exception on parsing. I can work with that. Maybe Vulcan. Sorry, not that int name. And then, okay, because I'm fuzzing each of these structs independently, as much as I can, that is, um, I don't want, I don't want to have like a, a, a crap ton of fuzzing binaries created. I just want to use one binary to fuzz them all, but I'm going to have a switch internally. So actually, I'll take three things in. First. The application second will be the name of the struct that we're bringing in third will be the file we're actually doing so if argv uh, one equals let's say that can't do that we need a uh, that Then we're going to go into the. We need this type. This is the data. Just data. We'll just say data. Then we'll just do like a try. Try, catch a couple times. For the moment. Where we say, hey, you know. Oh, for, no. Maybe. Okay, no. YAML read optional stuff data like that. We have one for reading optionally, one for reading optionally with a sub node, and required and required. Okay. And then we need to load in the data. Why am I? Yeah, and the reason why I'm putting it in here is because it's going to be inside that loop. It's going to be inside that uh, while AFL loop.
a hundred thousand. Who cares? Like that. Uh, this big old loop, which is only available with AFL. Oh, wait, hold on. I got an extra thing, don't I? Uh, yeah, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we just repeat this against all the types. That's the idea. Okay. So, I need a first time because I need an if versus elif, else if for all the rest of the cases. First equals true. Through them all the struts. It's not the YAML data, but we're going to skip it. We need to do it doubly like that, correct? Yes, yes, yes. So this is like that. Else. It becomes else if. Okay, then I now need to print out a multi-line thing. It's going to be like this. So you got, put this as zero. Is that it? There's just, yeah, I just got a whole bunch of Things I need to escape. Generate fuzz source dash x uh, dot gen cache dash y screw up so yaml nothing cute there we go. Oh, I also need to do if first and that. All right.
Oh, I didn't format it either. Okay. Okay, spit this out into temp. So I can actually grab this out. All here and pour it into here and be horrified that I didn't I got I missed one Miss it in the AFL loops, that's fine. Okay. I think this will be almost good enough. Minimal load. All right, now I'm going to take a little detour to f make sure I know how I'm uh, doing AFL stuff. Oh, I yeah, actually, I need to add it, don't I? I don't have it here. Yeah, okay. Okay, I got that. I just need a new shell entirely because I need to go in here. I need to, because I can't change compilers, I need to like, just regenerate the whole thing. So, and AFL equals on. We want to build the tests. We want to make sure it's LTO mode, if I recall, because it's not by default. It's something slightly slower. And that's J fuzz. Yeah. Now, the next thing I want is to do fuzzing. I need to do AFL fuzz, correct? Yes. Dash input is what? This git foe gives. Wait, okay, no, the input is the input directory, yes. Graphics, UK, libs, YAML, tools, outdoor, uh, let's say I'm doing, this one was a pretty big one, yeah. So this is the directory right here. This is the starting, this is the directory of input data I'm going to put the output into the root slash out it's non binary so d and then we need to say hey you know we're running libs so graphics uk 
Dibs YAML. Nope. Test. Fuzz. Fuzz. Right? No. Oh, uh, I need to go to build. Okay, uh, I'm in a different directory than I thought I was. That does. And then I need to print the type that I'm dealing with. And then we're getting input from standard line. And actually, oh, I can't even do this here because terminal thing's going to be larger. Because it's like an incurses thing. So we need a CD full engine. Okay. Do 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 Go. Uh, we'll prefix this because I don't really care too much right now. Uh, let me get another one. What do I have to do? I need to change. What am I? What? What's my scaling governor? On demand, adjusted between that and that. You know what? Actually, I'll just deal with that performance drop. I don't want to like throw my CPU into the fire. Okay, uh, I was here, right? Bam. Okay. So out of those two cases, it's already gotten... 31? 33. This is precisely why I wanted this in the first place. There is no way I was probably going to come up with 37 individual cases. 38. For testing input for a single strut type. Times like all those other struts. Like it just wasn't going to happen. And this is just using two input bits. Two uh, pieces of input. Uh, just, you know, the... And technically it's the one. Like it's just, uh, for this, it's just this. And then <laughs> this under a subnode. Out of those two, it managed to come up with, what, 38 different cases with 38 different paths with a whole bunch of cases. So let's have a quick look at what the cases actually look like. Q. Uh, were there any crashes? No crashes. So, of course, you have slight modification of the original or the originals just together. No? Oh, no, it's, it's start modifying them right away. And then just a whole bunch of other very whatever some binary so apparently each one of these cases opened up a new path how the program acted differently which is cool and if I kept it running for longer I probably would have found even more Okay, so I'm generating basic corpus data. I am then fuzzing that data and I'm generating a bunch of different cases. Now, the next part is the third part of this is I need to put it into, no, I don't want to put it directly in. What I want to do is I want to like isolate what kind of test it should be performed on it because of course some are like some only are read optional will only work with that some will only work with this some will only work with this 
So we'll only work with these or a combination thereof or none of them at all. And I don't want to like, so what I want to do is I want to sort the data out so that I can like pinpoint exactly which test areas, cases that they are supposed to be testing or should be going into to test and throw them in that way. I think. Or I want to figure out the success cases. Yes. So I can figure out, you know, which... Because when I'm testing uh, this stuff, I want to see, like, you know, which ones can I test doing, you know, require no throws? Which ones are instead going to throw? And I won't be doing throw matches. That'll be, like, nigh impossible. But I can at least say, like, make sure it does throw because it is supposed to throw. And which ones are not supposed to throw at all. So... Time to figure out how to sort. How do how am I going to sort this? Some kind of sort program. What this, or actually a sort script and a sort program. So, hold on, what am I doing? Sort script for quickly. For file in the initial corpus directory, which will be here slash out slash. Let's just say what what was it? This do. Whoop. We're just gonna like echo if if there's like a sub something or other. If there's an unfile, I don't care. Otherwise, I do care. What it's going to go through is it's going to call the sort program. It's going to do this basically twice. This, and it's going to do it uh, going back a couple of directories. So out of here, I need to go like what? One. I need to go back this many directories to find the original out directory. Out, right? Out default queue. Are you sure? Okay, I got those. Why don't I have this out? Oh, it's out there. There we go. Okay. We'll have a count for each one that passes through. It'll be So what I'll do is it'll be like a count, like 1.yaml, 2.yaml, 3.yaml, and then I'm going to prefix it with a series of special numbers. A state which are the successful no-throw cases, supposed no-throw cases. Which means... for the sorter application. I need
please. It's not in the AFL because I don't want it to just be exclusive to the AFL area. But int name. Same thing. It's going to figure out exactly. It's going to pinpoint exactly which one it's, it's going to do. So we're just doing on per file basis here. We don't have to do the, the, the YAML, the load file in there. We can just do it here. Actually, is this even something I should be trying? This may, hmm, not sure. If this okay we're going through these we're going to have okay Optional If it passes this then optional case true something like that if if we get through all that then we have some stuff at the end that's going to say, hey, you know, um, this is the, what the output of this program is just the prefix. Where we're going to say standard string. We'll say, you know, zero, one, we'll say like this, this three, four cases. Two, three, four. So optional, optional sub case would be case one, two, case three. Prefix is empty, then prefix equals n. It just not no case, neither case. Okay. Can I make this? Sorter, please. Great. So 
So with that in place, I'm going to have to then find, wait, hold on, where is... Libs test, copy this, sort, this location, but it's sorter, with the file type, with the type being done is this, and then we're passing in the file. Oh, um, okay. Okay, so some of the cases are of course, uh, where it just failed to parse the file entirely. That's not really what I'm trying to look to test here. So, I mean, uh, it's inevitable. One of those one of those paths that the, the, the fuzzer found was going to be unable to parse file, which is not my business. That's part of the YAML business. That's outside the scope of what I'm trying to test here. So. I'll need to put this in a little try catch. Catch whatever and just return one. I don't care. It's not my business. Get out of here. So, one of these is just terminate called after throwing instance of YAML parser exception. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I need to actually make sorter. Okay, yeah, that's the case that didn't find anything. So like this case, this, this first one is usable in case says one, two, and three somehow. Not sure how. I'm going to actually want to look at that. The other cases for his cases zero and two, uh, one, two, three again. No, 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 none. Zero two, zero two, zero two. Just two, zero two, and a bunch of other none cases, neither cases. So that would be where it just returns an exception of some sort, which is makes sense to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had like one. Where it just failed to parse entirely. Should be a case I don't want to have. So what will happen at this stage will be I'm, I'm sorting them. I'm going to put them into not the fuzz corpus. Fuzz corpus is different from I have to put them in another directory. It'll be, like it'll just be in here. It'll be not test. It'll be just like test. Um, fuzzed input, I guess. Fuzzed input, and that'll be sorted per directory. So. while I still try to figure out exactly what I'm doing. And then that, those, okay, if, what do I call it, result? I guess result.
if result if dash z if result is not nothing then we're doing something and we're going to pick that file out we're going to copy the file from file and it'll become you know to from here i'm going back one directory i'm going to technically this should be under data not test right yeah for the moment for the moment though i'm just putting it here buzzed Input. this directory it's going to be result dash count dot yaml same thing here exact same thing here Whatever. It's always zero, never increases. Nice. Useless. Or is it just not, not is it the not result I'm looking for? There we go. Whoops. Whoa, okay, here. Zero two zero blah 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 blah. Those are all the test cases. Fuzz test cases. Lovely. What is this? DLE. DLE and DEL. Invisible characters. Oh! Oh how lovely. I mean, it's still something that parsed as YAML, but won't parse in uh, as part of my application. I try to read it in any of the four paths. Only a few of them work for all of them. This is the original, original, whoa, hold on. One sub and one YAML. Okay. That's not quite right. Okay, I want to echo the result out of that. Yeah, out of here. One, two, three, and zero, two. Zero, two. Oh, okay, I'm just, it's the other way around, right. I need to do it the other way around. Uh, even if it makes it a bit more difficult, it has, it should be the other way around. My bad. Um, just, and get rid of all this. Count result. Okay. Run. There we go. That makes a bit more a bit more sense. And then it goes through the rest. Yes. All right. 
And then the final piece of all this will be uh, the actual application that does the testing during regular test runs. Because I am not going to be doing fuzzing every time I want to test. I want to like, when I make a change to the application, then I run fuzz for a few minutes, 10, you know, five, you know, a few minutes, five, 10 minutes, whatever. Just process that output and put it in as the fast input that runs on the CI. There's no point in me rerunning. If the code isn't changing, there is no real point in me rerunning the fuzzing over and over and over and over again. At least for this stuff, for, for this kind of stuff, this YAML based, very structured textual input, I, as far as I can think. And I don't have the resources to do it. Maybe one day in the future, but not now, not now. So I'm going to grab another drink and then I'll get to work on the final piece of this. Okay, I'm back now. So fuzzed in, okay, yes, fuzzed input. It's all sorted and stuff. So now I've got the sorted stuff. Now I want to do, so that, those are particular structs. So I need a new thing here, which is like VK struct parsing. Something like that. New file. New, it's been nearly two years since I did this. November 10th, 2020. Yeah, okay. That's kind of depressing. <clears throat> I'm still kind of pissing around this low level stuff. Trying to get it sorted. Oh well. So, we've got catch HPP, Vulcan, parsing types. Wonderful. We're doing that. We're also going to grab out this. String that. A string. Whatever. <clears throat> Test case. We'll do. I don't know. Um, what is an example of this? Can I generate. I need to be able to generate the sorted stuff. Wait, sorter. Okay. <clears throat> no, no. I'll you know what? I'll I'll finish up the the scripts for that in another thing. I just want to get the rest of the pipeline done. The whole everything together. Oh, I don't Oh, no. I haven't even done like the uh generating the the struct parsing source file yet either yeah okay okay whatever uh test case this is the test case this is it so we're talking about this So how does this work? We've got to include file system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a define, define uh, first. Put directory. So like that it's going to be whatever it is. Something. It's going to be something. <clears throat> Whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through. Am I? Am I going to do that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So let me grab file system CPP reference. Directory iterator. <clears throat> so the directory we're looking at is um, equals fuzzed input directory slash uh, the name of the thing, which is this.
And what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we need a directory iterator, which is what? Standard. How's this work? Okay. So const end iterator is standard file system. Iterator of inputter. Like that. We've got to go through each entry. So we'll just do this for the moment. Just add it to here. Come on. Right. <clears throat> I need to provide, so I've got a link library, so target, compile definitions. This, it's private, and it's like a what? I have another location around here somewhere that I do it, right? Editor mode, no. Private, no. XR, nope. <clears throat> here we go. Something like this. The direct close. Yes. So I got that for private. And I've got the. This equals. Current source slash fuzzed input. All right, can we do that? Whoop. Make that, yeah. Not quite. <clears throat> I need to do this. Will that work? Or does that have to be a string? Okay, maybe it's if it's a string view in the string view. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, can I do this? Where I add, yes, iterator, okay. go fast. You build that fast, please.
Come on. What? Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. I can't do that. Okay, um... <clears throat> regular no AFL we'll just get this uh, test yes yes debug great do, 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 do coverage great run 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 wow much fast er. mm, okay <clears throat> so went through all the files I presume it looks like in a very odd order but you know I guess it doesn't really matter too much very strange though hmm. whatever it goes through them all these are all the files these are all the files I can grab so now I can use this iterator to load okay try first of all I need to Determine determine the test set. Um, that and then we're going to have out of the name out of the iterator <sighs> standard string mm, middle portion so how would this work it's between the last dash and the fur and the last dot that's what I'm looking for um, equals 10 the set string I guess so it dots what is this this is just what a directory entry so can I grab a string what is this what is this Can I, okay, I can grab the path. I can do the string off of that. <laughs> okay. Set string dot substring. Set string dot find last of dash. And n is. Okay, we'll just do one and then we do set string set string dot substring set string dot find last of the dot that should give me out that whoops one that this one okay with that now I can figure out what if There's no contain still. Uh, 
Okay, is there anything else I can do in string to help me? There's a contains in C plus plus twenty three. That took long enough to happen. I can just do a find. If dot find uh, a zero. Okay, then I don't need these. Not equals standard string and position, right? And position is the case. Oh, is this? Oh, it's a substring or what? No, no, find regular size type. Formally return value position of the character or end pause if it's not found. Okay. If this is found, then we want to. No throw. Otherwise, um, throw. And just do this uh, several times. So this is like what? Optional. Optional subcase. We got the required case. Subcase zero one two three like that. So we can do run the check where it be you know YAML read optional for the type which oh I need the type. And I need the YAML data. Hmm. YAML node data. Or actually, I can just do that up here. I know it's it should uh, succeed. I just do that. Dot path. Dot string. Okay. We load that file. So it's nothing. Data and data. Just like that. Check that. Otherwise, check throw. <clears throat> check no throw, sorry. Check throws. As expression and type. I want to make sure that it's always throwing my type of exception. required. <clears throat> 